we'll follow that up with questions. First of all, thank the Lord that you all are here. It's a blessing to be here once again. I find it a privilege to be here. Celebration Bowl is unbelievable what they've created. And to be here for the second year straight is uh, wonderful. I'm just getting a, a text. I get academics and who miss study hall and who this every day. So I'm just getting a text from our academic advisor that says the team GPA is 2.9. 47 players with 3.0 or higher, 13 um, graduated. Love it. That's the kind of stuff that just makes me smile. So it's a wonderful time for me to get that type of uh, message. Now, let's get on with the main thing. I feel like having a good time today. So let's get it started. Yes, sir. Questions? I can hear you. Raphael Hayes with the three point conversion. Of course, there's been a lot of talk with leaving and the city has left and now the HBCU. But I saw the video with Coach CC and how he responded, you responded to the team. Yeah. Can you talk about still the opportunities that are being had for the Oh, yeah. HBCU? First of all, you got to understand, we're really good at doing media. I think you guys know that, our team. My son runs all that as well. So sometimes we let you get it all out, let you say what you're going to say, then boom, we'll drop a video on you and make you take back what you, know, you thought. So <laughs> seeing that and uh, having uh, a wonderful AD, Ashley has a wonderful, one of the, I think he's the best in the game, really. He's the best in the game. And to have someone from the inside take over to understand how we move, how we think, to, a, to be able to have a multitude of meetings with some of the kids that were thinking about exiting. And now they're stabilizing those kids. It's wonderful for not just uh, Jackson State, for HBU period, HBCU period. So uh, TC is the right guy and you got a chance to see our energy and you thinking everybody was sitting up there crying and sobbing and mad and angry. We ain't built like that, man. We have some good kids. And uh, the object was to raise boys to men. And most of our kids are very, very extremely mature. And I'm proud of that. I'm a left coach. Yes, sir. Just, okay. Don Stenson, DNA Sports Talk. Coach, a lot of times uh, when a coach leaves a program, he's they usually don't come he, back to. Usually he's fired. <laughs> Let's just get that straight. He's fired. OK. He's elevated or terminated, one of the two. And you chose to elevate. Mm -hmm. Normally, they don't coach in a ball game. What went into your decision of coaching this particular ball this game? This is a, a different circumstance. This is a circumstance like no other. Most of the coaches do what? They take the bag, they run, they don't even kiss goodbye. You know, at the conclusion of the SWAC championship, I didn't even want to be there for the award presentation. I could answer them. Some of you probably seen that. I was so concerned about getting back talking to my team. That that's always on my mind. Talking to my team. Let us get let's get this out. Let's let's be direct. Let's answer the questions you want. Tell me how you feel. I tell you how I feel. What went into it? And we showed you most of it probably two weeks later after we let you vent. But it's an extreme circumstance. I'm thankful for our AD at Colorado and our AD here that they've allowed me to finish what we start. We always talk about finishing. And then sometimes we have the audacity as adults to leave prematurely. And I wanted to finish. And my kids wanted me to finish. And you had some fools talking about, well, he should go. Well, if I go, don't you think the song going to? You might want to consider that. <laughs> like, I'm going to go and leave my son. Y'all lost your man. Yes. Dion Allison Mastrangelo with WSB in Atlanta. You talk about talking with your team. So how are you, I don't know, dealing with the emotions and maybe even the pressure of coaching your last game with JSU yeah, and leaving a legacy? It was emotional in the last championship game. But it's no pressure. This ain't pressure. This is fun. This ain't pressure. This is a game. There's so many people out in the hospital dealing with pressure. This is not pressure. This is a game. Someone wins, someone loses. Pressure when that doctor comes and tells you, you you only have five or six days. That's pressure. That single mother that can't make it because the bills just don't add up, that's pressure. This ain't no pressure. It's a game. And we play to win. Yes, sir. Look. Coach Prime, James. Oh, James. Hold on, James. No mic. 
I'm sorry. Luke Williams, Black College Sports Page coach. Okay. Uh, I watched the uh, Coach Prime about what you went through with the hospital. It was, oh, y'all kidding me? Yeah, it was oh, on Barstool. I didn't think nobody cared because ain't nobody asked me about that in a long time. Yeah, it was, that was uh, it was unbelievable. It's traumatic. And congratulations for coming through. Thank it. you. Yeah. So when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm walking with that limp, it's really a limp. It ain't yeah. another thing. Yeah. Uh, if you if you see it, it's very real. It's real. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to ask is. It's, and I, I introduced myself, Luke Williams from the mm -hmm. Black College Sports page. Um, uh, what went into you picking uh, T.C. Taylor? Um, because, look, Shoot, you, what, no, let, me, let me explain. You're a big personality. I would have mm -hmm. thought that Ashley may have wanted to go find Michael Vick or somebody. It ain't but one prime. Let's get that straight. Okay. That's let's, clear. Let's, let's get that's that straight. Let's, 100%, 100%, let's, when I say that, 100%. let's get the gavel and that's it. You, um, absolutely you right. You got to stay in house. And this is a spiritual thing as well. This is not just a W and L thing. Thanks. TC is not only a good man, he's a great person who knows the game, who understands the culture, who understands the kids, who I've set down countless amount of hours and poured into, who's come to Texas and fished with me that I've been able to pour into that I knew he was the right man for the job. And I'm thankful that they went with him because oftentimes when a guy leaves and tell you who's the right man for the job, what we do, we go with another man because of the sensitivity and, and the controlling thing. And it's not about control, it's about picking the right man for the job. And you could tell by the response of our players that TC is the right man for the job. And I'm proud of him and he deserves it. Very back. Yes. Hey, Mark Jones, The Real Review. Uh, compared to last year's game and this year's game, what's the difference in the schedule and how you went about it in preparing to take on your opponent well, this we weekend? Well, we were smelling ourselves last year. We felt good. I was just coming out during the hospital, so everybody wanted to have a good time. We made it. Um, Jackson State hadn't won since Moby Dick was a mental at that time, so we we was feeling ourselves. We uh, I'm not going to say we needed to be humbled, but we were feeling ourselves. And what happened was supposed to happen. Not once have we mentioned anything of that nature in any meetings this year. We don't result back and revert back to what transpired. We're forward thinkers. The mission was to dominate, we're dominating. The mission was to, to win and we won. And, but we have not completed the mission. We have one more step to go and we're dead serious about that. So it's a whole different approach as regards to regards to curfew, to focus, and to understanding, we only here in Atlanta for one thing, and it ain't to go to Magic City. Although I love my man Magic, okay? It's to win a football game. I don't know how many head coaches have referred to Magic City in the press conference. <laughs> you got a real one here. <laughs> Let's go. Who? Dion, uh, Brian Howell from the Bowler Daily Camera. Um, when you had your press conference in Colorado, you mentioned um, coaching both teams, you obviously yeah. played football, baseball at the same time, you can mm -hmm. multitask. How has this been different, trying to coach two different teams as opposed to playing, where you're kind of worried about yourself at that point? I keep the main thing the main thing. You know, wherever my feet are, that's where I am. Uh, that's why you compile a wonderful staff. The Bible says, I repeat this, that rod and that staff, they comfort me. So I have a wonderful staff that's doing the necessary things to make sure we're dominant uh, on signing day. I have a wonderful staff to make sure doing the necessary things that we're dominant tomorrow and today. So we have some people in place to make sure we're keeping the main thing the main thing, but that starts with me. I have to be single-minded, and I show my kids, not only that, I show my coaches and their family members that I'm single-minded when it comes to this. I know it may not be comfortable for to see a guy in Colorado apparel than see him in uh, Jackson State apparel, but it is what it is. This is something that we got to cross. And our kids are very keen and very smart. And if you know how much we pour into them before we even make it to the field, you would understand how we are. Yes, sir. Coach Prime, James Hill with James Hill Sports. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how you feel about HBCU football having – One thing at a time. Give me one thing at a time because I'm getting old. Okay. Being able to see it from the inside out. Love it. 100%. Oh, you, you know darn well it could be a multitude of changes to enhance it, to enlighten it, to, to make it better than what it is. But I, I think it's a growing brand. I think we've uh, 
enlarge the, the popularity and understanding what could possibly be. We're seeing uh, James Houston from Jackson State go out there and make many plays from the Detroit Lions. And you're seeing other players from uh, HBCU and SWAC and, and do some phenomenal things. So I've said since day one, all these kids need is an opportunity and exposure. And that does not change with my arrival and departure. Yes, sir. Bill Trochi, Sporting News. Uh, I wanted to ask, what was the reaction when you brought up to Colorado that you did want to finish these two weeks? Because I think probably ideally Colorado wants you focused on Colorado. No, it wasn't um, a reaction. It wasn't even a conversation. I think they knew how I felt and they knew my heart and they knew you got to finish. You got to finish. You got to finish. I think they admire finishing what you started. That's very admirable. And uh, Rick never even brought it up to me. We never even discussed because it was a, we knew what time it was in that regards, that we were going to finish what we started. I can't tell a child to finish what he started, and, and I'm not. Very bad. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, Kate Rogerson from ABC 11 in Raleigh. Uh, what impresses you about this central team, and what have you noticed from them on tape? Um, well, Coach, um, very consistent, very capable. Quarterback can do some phenomenal things. Uh, they don't give up a lot of points in the red zone. They're able to be stout. Uh, but in saying that, we see some things that we could take advantage of as well. But they're not here by mistake. They're 9-2, and two and they did a wonderful job in the MEAC. We just got to go out there and do what we do. And when we're doing what we're doing, I don't think anybody could deal with us. Right here. Right here. Yes. Joe Cook, 16 WAPT. Coach, I just wanted to know how you guys gone about the preparation with you going to Colorado and TC being elevated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have you guys, is it business as usual? Does TC get more say? How have you guys kind of navigated that? TV, TC is elevated to be the head coach of next season. Should I drop the mic on that? <laughs> I'm still here, partner. I'm still here. You know, I'm still here. Um, that's not a discussion. Everybody know what time it is, man. You know what time it is. Come on. I'm not, I'm not just hanging around, just biding time, just watching my sons. No, no. I still do what I do, and we do what we do really well. So I'm going to try to guide this ship and right this ship and win this ship, okay? Then after that, we're going to pass that back to TC, and he's going to do the doggone thing and pick right up where we left off. That's how it goes down. Very right back, Coach. Y yes. Coach Kevin McClendon from the Sports Shot Radio. Quick question. Congratulations on all your success Thank you. and everything that you've done. Um, one of the questions I have is, quick moment of reflection, your time at Jackson State University, yeah. what's been your fondest memory, your fondest time, and your most proudest memory of Jackson State? My most proudest memory, coming out of the hospital, being carried by some of these men that are that are in here today because I couldn't walk. Because my son, Shador, had told me, I need you. I think we were playing Southern last year. And uh, it was cold, inclement weather was crazy. But I told my son I'd be there. And I made it. Weak, frail as ever, probably 30 pounds down, cold. And the game wasn't going our way, but I knew we were going to win. I never flinched. And he brought us back. And then Shiloh had the game clinching interception. And I look at the scoreboard, and we had 21 points on it. That was God. That was a, this is just a God moment. Uh, that probably, in the pandemonium, it, it was crazy. It was crazy, uh, the way our fans reacted. And we won there. Unfortunately, a couple, few guys got suspended for fighting or whatever they were doing. But that was probably my most fondest memory. Never Coach, forget that. Coach Prime Vaughn Wilson from HBCU Game Day. Coach, just a few yards from here, you made your name and built the Georgia Dome. It's no yes. longer there, but how fitting would it be just a few yards away for you to win your first collegiate championship? It's going to be fitting. It's going to be fitting, and I'm, I'm thankful that God would, God would choose this city for us to do so. Um, hats off to the Celebration Bowl, and you guys do a good job. HBC, HBCU Game Day do, does a wonderful job. Yes. Right here. Short question. 
Coach, in regards to what's been saying, uh, what's been going on, I like to give people uh, flowers while they're living. That's a good thing. I'd like to thank you for coming to HBCU. Thank you. I'd like for you to thank you for honoring your word. Thank you. I'd like for you, I'd like to thank you for mentoring our kids. And regardless of what anybody say, you always talk about the next level. People fail to realize you, you aspire to do things too. Mm -hmm. So going to Colorado, I think that's a great, a great idea. Let, let's, let's, let's get the cat out of the bag, man. Let's go ahead and talk about that. You're right on all accounts. I appreciate you. Um, never once did I say they're going to put a tombstone with my name on it at Jackson State. So I wasn't going to die here. Y'all know that. Everything I said I would do, I did. Everything I said I wanted to happen, I tried my darnest to make it happen. We've exceeded, I think, expectations in some realm. But when I don't fit into someone else's plan and purpose, now there's ridicule. But you forgot about my plan and God's purpose. Uh, that's where the dysfunction comes. I reached a point where I said to myself, we're going to go out there and recruit another great class. And we were. And, and TC will. And we're going to win again. So at what point do we keep dominating that you don't get mad at us for dominating? Because it's a level of dominance where you start to turn. And I felt that. We start to get tension from our own people because you're dominant. And you start saying, well, that's prime. He can recruit that. We ain't got that. We don't have this. We heard that last night. You're four and five stars. Yeah, because we recruit those and they, and they sign. But it comes a time that that's not what it's all about for me. I'm a winner. I've always won. I'm going to win. Y'all know that if you've done your homework. But it's bigger than that. It's about increasing enrollment. It's about the safety of students. It's about going to the next level, not just in football. I would love to go to another conference. Is the rest of the school ready? Is the baseball team ready? Is the basketball teams ready? Or just the football team? See, you make it just about football, and it's not just about football to me. It's about our trainers and kids that the fire alarms may go off and not being turned off at 3.15 in the morning. It's about people that may not have the proper safety on a campus that they should. I'm not just talking about Jackson State, I'm talking about everywhere. So the things that I want to accomplish, I can't do it by just being the Durham football coach and winning games. I can't do it. And I reached a point where I had a real conversation with the Lord. Now, it's funny how you believe the Lord when he said to come here, but you don't believe me when I tell you the Lord may tell me to do otherwise. It's like my God is talking to you about me. I don't think he works like that. But it's so much more that I can't do because that's not my occupation. I'm a football coach and a darn good one. And name one thing in football that we haven't accomplished that I said we would. But it's bigger than that. And until we address these underlying issues that nobody wants to talk about, ain't nothing going to change. Football, yes. But what else is going to change? And I'm a change agent. That's what it's all about to me. Because I'm not just attached to the football players, the equipment persons, the trainers, the academic persons, everybody on campus. When we leave, you're going to find out what all we did. Because they don't really talk about the positivity until we go. You'll find out what all we did for Jackson State and all we wanted to do for Jackson State. I just pray to God that in all that getting, get some understanding on change and where change really starts. And it does not start in the football department. Thought it was good. Hey, that was a moment, wasn't it? Yeah, Coach Sanders. Thank you, Sam, for clapping me off. My man. Hey, uh, amen to that. that amen. Was, that, that said You're a looking lot. good, sir. Yeah, thank you. You too. I uh, just want to congratulate you for a terrific season, everything you've thank done. Thank you. And uh, for the next chapter. Yes, sir. Uh, just, just a question. Um, what can you get out of uh, participating in the Celebration Bowl that maybe you couldn't get 
uh, out of participating, let's say, in the one double A playoffs. I've had conversation with some ADs, and they're saying, "Well, money, you know, maybe money, we should money, money yeah. for our school. How about that? Uh, let's start off with that. Okay. Celebration Bowl. What they do in the purse here is much greater. Say we play in the uh, the playoffs, the FCS playoffs. Okay, most of those games are where in uh, right. We got to fly there. Well, who, who paying for that? We don't have that in the budget. Like, you know, I would love to, for that us to host a home game. I would love that. But a lot of those things are not in the budget for us here at Jackson State. And uh, as a football coach, I had many hats. And I think about those things. And those, how do those things not just affect that program, but affects the school. So that does not fit whatsoever. But... And saying that, fam, you should have been invited. Yes, the playoffs. Tremendously. They should have been invited. That don't make sense. Several teams that were beneath what they accomplished. They were only lost by ranked teams. Two ranked teams they were their losses, a power five and us. And you're still not invited. And some teams lost four and five games that were invited. That's not right whatsoever. And Coach Simmons is a stand-up guy, and I know he said it more, much more eloquently than I did, but that's the real. And I love the Celebration Bowl and what it stands for. I wish it could be dual teams, you know, like four teams, like a playoff. Yes, enlarge this because this is a beautiful thing for us as a people. So we're going to go with our final two questions from the Washington Post and then Milton, um, Wilton Jackson. Thank you. Uh, Liz Clark, Washington How you Post. How you doing, sweetheart? I'm good. Um, congratulations on your success in this Thank phase you. of life and your students. Um, I have kind of a business corollary to, to the difference you've made at Jackson State. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, corporate donations to the school from some Fortune 500 companies have come in, and, mm -hmm. and I understand um, donations from, from alumni, from other groups. No, well, um, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, no. Let's separate that. Okay. All right. Let's, well, let me stick with, with the, the corporate. corporate and the alumni. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's a big difference. So, okay. So to boil it down, what difference do you, did you see that make to Tr your tremendously. school? Tremendously. And then what do you expect or hope those corporations to do after you're gone? The what sort of com commitment do you expect okay. from them? Uh, let's start with someone like Walmart. We had a tremendous relationship with a Walmart. Um, the CEO is a wonderful friend. They did some wonderful things, and they are doing some wonderful things, not with just giving, but just giving opportunities for employment as well to some of our students, like six figures employment, not starting off at the bottom of the barrel whatsoever. Um, a football field. Um, that was donated in it, a turf football field that we couldn't function. We were going 20 minutes away to practice at a during high school and we we're a college. But it had not been for Walmart, that would have never transpired. Uh, Procter & Gamble did a wonderful job. Um, I partnered with uh, Under Armour. They did a wonderful job. Who else there? Yeah? Aflac did a wonderful job. Anybody I get in bed with got to also sleep with Jackson State. So do you, I'm sorry about my analogies, but I just keep it so you understand how, how I get down. But everybody that we partnered with also partnered with Jackson State. I don't know if that process will remain, but I pray that it does. Now, another thing that we had a speaker series um, inherited by who? From Smack Entertainment, a representational company, which brought CEOs from around the country to give kids opportunities for employment, as well as to enlighten them on how today's world is ran um, for the sake of jobs and careers or whatever. I hope that continues by some type of way, but we didn't get the participation from the school that we would have wanted to because you got kids going to college to get um, employment of some status statute, but you got guys right on campus that are able to give you that, and the uh, participation was dismal because the communication was absurd. Okay, so I'm hoping some of those things, some of those things will, they came with me and they would leave with me, of course, but I'm hoping that we left the blueprint to go, how to go to acquire those things. But those things are only going to come with success. No one wants to put a dime on someone's not winning. I think you all know that. So winning breeds uh, success and uh, not just companionship, but relationship. That's the word I'm looking for. Success breeds relationship. And I hope those relationships continue. I know 
some of the companies, Under Armour and so forth, they, they will because the whole school is outfitted with UA. And Kevin Plank just came and did a whole presentation at our school a couple weeks ago. And that was phenomenal. And we hope that continues. Last one. Yes. Go. My Coach, man. How you doing? Good, sir. This is a question more from a father and a uh, coach, coach's perspective. Okay. In the interview with Rob J., you said that that conversation that you had with Shadur was kind of hard to have when you when you guys walked down the sideline every game. Yes. Um, how do you think that conversation will go for this game? Um, like it went in high school. The last one that we had in high school, we knew we were – we didn't even know we would be together, first of all, once again. So it, that was tough because I thought that was it. And I didn't know at the time. So it's going to be tough because our love and our commitment to JSU in the time that we were afforded here. It's going to be tough. It was tough last week because I knew that was the last time we were going to play at home. And that was tough. It was emotional. Matter of fact, I darn it forgot. And he said, Dad, come on, man. Come on, come on, let's go. He had to remind me of the walk. Never had he had to do that, but that's how my mind was last week. I was, you know, I was all over the place emotionally because it was very emotional. This week, uh, we it, it'd probably be a little better because we know we're still going to be together, as well as Shiloh, and as well as some of the other players that, that are going to journey with us. So it's going to be good. Uh, but it'd be great if we come out of there with victory. That's what it's all about. Winning is the only thing we do this for, and changing lives, and trying to provoke change. Did I get everything, guys? You did, Coach. Thank you. you. Did. Okay. Let me let me get this one last gentleman. I'm sorry. Right there in the back. Yes. Uh, Travis is a phenomenal player, phenomenal athlete, phenomenal young man. I believe uh, he's probably 3.5 GPA or higher. He's done a wonderful job, maybe higher. Uh, done a wonderful job. Uh, he got healthy, snicked up during the season, but he's understanding the. you got to be on, on point every game, every play, because the opposing team wants you. They, you know, they want to catch balls on him. They want to knock him out. He has to be on point, but he's very mature, very ready for the moment, and I look for him to have a, a phenomenal game, phenomenal game. I want to thank you all. I appreciate you. I'm sorry, my brother. I'm just come on now. Don't don't do me like that. I ain't the one calling the shot. Hey, I appreciate you. I love you. I have the utmost respect. Um, I think we did everything we said we would do, and then some. And you're probably gonna find out about the then some when we're long gone. But I appreciate you all for filling this room, for doing your part with uplifting and highlighting HBCU football um, to the fullest. You've done a phenomenal job. We couldn't have accomplished the things we've accomplished without each and every one of you. We have all ethnicities, which I love. This is not a white thing. This is not a black thing. It's not a Hispanic or Asian thing. This is a football thing and a kid's thing. And as long as we keep the kids the main thing, we prosper. I've always kept the kids the main thing. God bless you all. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Just a reminder that the first 15 minutes of practice is open to the media.